Hey there, friends. Have you ever heard of that song? A whole new world for you and me. Well, that's the star coming up. It's coming next year with all of the open-ended, short answer, extended, and essay responses. But for you math teachers, you're already doing open-ended because part of the answers that are gonna be open-ended are just writing a number. And as you know, all of you from third through ninth grade in algebra have at least three to five responses where your students have to, instead of picking A, B, C, D for odd numbers and F, G, H, J for even, they have to write a number down as they work out the problem and then place that on a grid. So I'm going to show you the question and then I'm gonna show you my new traffic light, how to get one point when you need one, how to move it to a two when they're asking for evidence and how to get a three on essay uh, responses, or if you're English one and English two, how to get uh, four on expository or persuasive compositions. So the question we're gonna look at only had 18% in Texas. And if I hold up four fingers, there are always four multiple choice answers in Texas. Some other states might have five or three or two or whatever, but our multiple choice has four. And so the odds are that if I just randomly pick one, I have a one in four chance of getting it right. And one out of four is one divided by four, which is what we're gonna be talking about today dividing a fraction to change it to a decimal and then changing decimals to percents or cents because we'll be talking about money today. So if I, I have a one in four chance, one divided into four parts, one dollar divided into four parts equals uh, four quarters. So 25 cents or 25%, uh, 25 hundredths is what it would be. So I have a 25 hundredths chance. Well, this question in sixth grade only got 18% correct because there weren't even answers to pick from. And there were a couple of reasons why it was difficult. So let me show you the problem so you can share it with your sixth grade uh it's gonna be because it was readiness any teacher in sixth grade seventh grade it would be supporting that means i've got to got i've got to come into seventh grade knowing how to change a mixed number to a whole number and a decimal so that I can work out this problem, okay? So I want you to notice it's category two readiness. It's a readiness standard, category two. It was 6.3E. And again, because it didn't have multiple choice because it was an open-ended world, it really struggled. Now, it said Jada worked 21 and I'm gonna hold my imaginary ball and bounce it on the floor. Jada worked 21 and one half hours last week. She earned $11 and 60 cents per hour of work. And so every time your students say and with the fraction, they have to remember that they have to be able to convert that fraction to a decimal decimal by dividing and a percent by changing the position. So that's the cool thing about fraction to decimal per, to percent is if you, when you're moving from uh, left to right, fra, fra, fraction to decimal, divide. Decimal to percent, position. Just change the position 
of the decimal. I'm going to show you how to do that. And the question said, how much money did Jada earn last week? And so I'm going to start showing you uh, all. I'll, I'll show you. The, this will be the first video that has my traffic light for open ended where we can start building our confidence when it comes to any kind of answer choice that's not multiple choice. So this is an introduction to my new traffic light. It's called one, two, three with W W E. It's an open-ended short answer, extended, constructed an essay response guide using a traffic light. The W is what is the question and what is the answer in order to get one point and so on grid responses your students don't get any extra points for doing it they have to work it out and figure out the answer by taking their number and placing it on a grid if you want to see the red here what is the question for essays what is the topic or prompt and so when the question we're going to look for words like with these W's, what, who, when, where, why, which, and how. And so what was the word in the question? How, how much money did Jada earn last week? Well, most people get paid either by salary or by the hour. And we heard that she got paid per hour. So before we can find out how many she got for all of the hours, we have to learn how many she got for each hour. So for expository essays and end of course, you're gonna have another couple of Ws. Write about the importance of something, write about whether or not something. The ninth grade, I wanna show it to you really quick, uh, just to take a moment uh, for those of you that teach fourth grade, which W did they ask in the prompt? Who? who is your favorite teacher and of course why and if you notice one two three four gets a good score how to get a one make sure you have your central idea whoever the teacher is give me reasons why she's your favorite teacher and examples to get a two develop it to get a three and to get a four choose your words carefully and so since even though we won't be doing uh this anymore for essay responses, we still have to do this much to get a three, uh, use correct spelling, capitalization, punctuation, grammar, and sentences. Make sure the paper has an ending when it's an essay like this, a conclusion, but they take time to do the editing and revising basically before they turn that paper in. What did the seventh grade question ask? why showing people you appreciate them can be important why is it important to show people that you appreciate uh, them why can it be important so if the student decides to say it's not important they just have to say why they don't feel that it is if they want to do that again the student rubric says one two three four the seventh grade only had four bullets so how to get the one what's your idea about the importance of appreciating to get a two give me reasons and examples if you want to turn it into a three develop those examples to get the four choose your words carefully with high vocabulary and voice and make sure the paper has an ending and take you time to edit and revise in ninth grade the key word was how how can receiving support from others help you achieve, achieve success? And the problem with this prompt, and it probably got some low scores, it was a dual prompt. It has a cause, receiving support from others, and an effect, helping you achieve success. Be, be, if the student only wrote about so getting support from others in their essay, but did not include how it would ach achieve success, or not achieve success, then they would only be doing half of what they're being asked. So they could only get half of a portion. That would be a one, two paper if you only wrote about one or the other. Okay. So again, how? And on the last one, 
just so you can see that every question, even the essay ones, have been always based on one of the W's, or sometimes these end of course ones will say, write about the importance of something or write about whether or not. And as you can see on my on my essay, end of course, it, it does say that. So you might possibly get that right about the importance of something W. Write W about whether or not something or something W. But on this one, if you look here, they gave you the choices already. Write about your, or your parent and which is more important preparing for the future or focusing on the present. And so they've got to give you their position, pick one. And again, as you notice, it's based on one W. And so that's why that red one is there. How do I get a one? Make sure I answer the question. Make sure I have a central idea, what they used to call it in fourth grade. Uh, controlling idea in seventh grade, a thesis in ninth grade, and a position in 10th grade, have reasons and examples. And, and all of that is listed for uh, a two when you want to turn it to a two. But we're not going to worry about the twos and the threes and the four. I don't, I don't need to get to four land right now because this question that, that was asked couldn't even get to one land it got to zero land uh it was 18 percent. so 88 82 percent of the kids in texas did not know how to solve this problem so let's take a look at it it said how that was the w question did she earn last week so i'm going to go to my math graphic organizer now and i'm going to break this problem it said that she worked 21 fraction and one half and there's my little tiny decimal one half hours is my key word well how do i go from fraction to decimal because i've got to make sure i have decimals you divide that one hour into two parts and so what happens when you open it up two 21 and one half is the same thing as 21 and five tenths of an hour or 50 hundredths of an hour. So then we have $11 and 60 cents per, that's for every single hour. So I want you to notice 60 cents is the same thing as if i cover that decimal 60 cents is the same thing as move the position this way 60 zero and 60 hundredths of a dollar and or zero and six tenths and so what a lot of your students did they tried to figure out how do i get this zero in there and this 0.5 and so since the decimal on the second number was um two places over and only one place over on the first one it made it harder for some kids and so as i just showed you 0.6 six tenths is the same thing as 60 cents or six hundredths and so I can remove that zero so that I can multiply. There's my new amount of hours that she worked, 21 and 5 tenths of an hour times $11 and 6 tenths of a dollar for every single hour six tenths, 60 hundredths, six, 60 cents, okay? So if you think of Spider-Man, and I think I have him here behind me, Spider-Man, show this to you without showing the screen, his main colors are black and red. So if you just have two colors, I suggest that you use 
black first on the first row of numbers and that you can use red to separate that way your ones digit gets separated from your tens and because this one was going to go all the way to the hundreds i went ahead and added a third color i used blue so i used black for the ones place multiplication red for the tens place and blue for the hundreds place hundreds okay so as you can see let's get this back here so that you can see a way to do it there is if you can see the reason i used spider-man is he's going to climb uh using the black numbers on the first on the first row six times five is 30. you carry the three you climb back down this building as spider-man six times one is six plus your carries is nine climb back down the building six times two and again we're making little webs black webs in this case and you could erase each time you can use erasable colored pencils six times two is 12 and this time there's no carries and so we would could play red rover move over and or we can just remember that now we're in the second position so we can play uh tick by crossing off the six and i'll do that for you tack by placing a red zero down below and toe to cross off any carries that you happen to have so you don't use them twice okay so then you can see that i have red webs and i have blue webs which are the ones that most of the kids struggle with and again think of superheroes as right-handed where they start at the bottom and they always go to the right and then they work their way to the left so now we're in the ones place which is the second digit over here because in this case the decimal comes after the whole numbers all right so one times five is five we write it in red come back down the building one times one is one nothing to carry come back down the building and one times two is two nothing to carry again okay so red rover red rover move over so we're gonna have to put we're gonna since we're starting in the tens place i've got to put a zero in the tenths a zero in the ones and uh i will start in the tens place so i need to do sort of tick tack and i'll put uh toe cross your carries and tack put another tick tack put another zero because we're moving over twice all right so our last number we're going to use blue this time one times five again always going to the right is five and you make sure that you start in the same position where your bottom number is what we're calling the spider-man as he's moving over from right to left one times five is five come back down the building one times one is one come back down the building climb the last web one times two is two all right so then as we know now that we've added and so make sure that your kids know that when they're saying this number six here that's six tenths so it would start in the tenths place because this one is in the ones place it starts 
in the ones place because this one is in the tens tens place it has to start in the tens place and then you work from there make sure your kids know that because they'll forget to put these zeros so let's just add up between the lines zero plus zero is zero nine plus five is 14 carry the one five plus two is seven plus one is eight plus the one i carried is nine nothing to carry this time two plus one is two plus one is two plus, two plus one is three plus one is four nothing to carry and two plus nothing and nothing is two so what we have is 249 doll 200 249.40, okay? And your kids probably had no earthly idea where to move the decimals, okay? If you wanna think of this without that decimal, that's 24,940 pennies. But because we had decimals, we have to move the position. So when you're changing it to uh, decimals, we have to move one position back to the left for this one and one position back to the left. And again, we had that zero back there, but we found out that six tenths is the same thing as 60 hundredths. So we would have to move two places over so it would be $249 and bouncing bouncing on the floor 40 cents so that would look like that 249 and four tenths so if they would have written like this with the decimal or like this 249 dollars and four dimes because that's what that would mean four tenths or 40 pennies 40 cents that's how much the student earn or if you're using my chart and you're having the kids actually put it in the correct place it would be 249 dollars is your keyword you don't need to put it when you're just plugging in grids and bouncing on the floor for dimes for tenths or 40 hundredths, uh, which is the same thing as 40 cents. 40% is 40 cents, okay? So that's our answer. And that is how I would solve it. And that was my first introduction to you on why probably the state feels that we need to get to open-ended so let me show you using the traffic light one last time the other questions and if you can please share this with all of your reading and writing teacher friends because all of these in parentheses are different ways that you're going to be able to get one point and these are all the constructed responses. Uh, they're going to be a number or a grid, which is what we just did. They might have to put a symbol or a word or an equation and equality for math. A phrase might be the answer, a sentence, a table, a graph. It might have multi parts where part A depends on part B or part B depends on part A. There might be a drag and drop. All of those are the different ways. And if you're wanting to go into more detail, I'll show this to you very quickly. What are some uh, of the words in the question or the prompt that I can use to help me respond? So if, I, if you wanna make your kids answer this question in a complete sentence by restating or repeating, I'll, I'll look at the keywords in the question. Jada, earned $249.40 last week. Those are all the exact words from the question. And so my first step there says that, restate. 
this does not mean that I have to restate or repeat the question or the prompt several times or the words in the question. What if I want to be a little more uh, interesting or creative? I can still answer the question. On your grid response, it's just going to be 249 and six, uh, 249 and four tenths uh, is the answer. But you can use the word wow to think of different ways to answer the question in a complete sentence. Rephrasing could be, what other words could I use? So you could say, Jada had an income of $249.40 during last, the last five days of her work week or seven days, depending on however many she worked. I just used the word income instead, okay? Uh, what other way can I start my, my sentence? Well, I only need one sentence because they were only asking me one thing. The amount of income that Jada earned, so you can teach your kids to start with a different part of speech. I'm still answering the question and I've got my wow there. I'm just starting with a different word. What original way can I respond? Reflection, what words of wisdom? I only need to do that when I'm doing full length essays for expository or persuasive. You don't really need to do that part, but I would suggest that you think a little bit on reflecting. Uh, if you're gonna have your kids write longer length essays for any subject uh, such as reading, social studies, science, biology, anatomy, um, because uh, when they write for end of course one and two, in order to get threes and four, they have to choose their words carefully, which will get mentioned down there at the bottom. So that's uh, how I would recommend uh, again, just kind of helping those of you who need repetition, restating, just use most of the same words from the question. Jada earned $249 and Forty cents last week. If you were to ask me how many days did she work, I have no idea because it only told us how many hours that she worked, not how many days. So that wasn't the question that was asked. So I don't need to worry about that. I'm going to guess if she worked 21 hours, if you work and we can kind of extend beyond the question, if you work 21 hours in a week, most people, if they work eight hour days, you might have worked two eight hour days and then maybe a half a day. Eight plus eight is 16 plus four is 20. So I would imagine that it was two or three days that Jada did this in if you were just guessing. And again, what I like about my mathematics chart, if you laminate this when you get it, you can use this and then your kids can use a dry erase marker. Uh, I have hundreds and thousands of these, so I'm able to use this. And so just for you math teachers, because um, the word uh, per hour was in the problem, we multiplied, you see that there, and the keywords were different an hour is not the same as a dollar. And we did need a bigger number because if she made that much per hour, then she would make a bigger amount for all of the hours. So the keywords being different and we need a bigger number, we would multiply. And that's there on my mathematics keyword chart the keywords are different or mean something different and you need a larger number, multiplication, product, 
and times. So there you have it. I did sort of a combination. I wanted to make sure I introduced my open-ended traffic light. I was proud of that. I'm working with uh, a student who's trying to pass end of course test, num uh, English one. And the mom wanted a way to combine answering open-ended questions, which some of the classrooms were asking for, and how to make sure she knew how to get a three or a four on the essay. And so I used the traffic light, how to go from red to yellow to green. Hope you like it. Please share this with your math teacher friends. Uh, I have the traffic light digitally on sale right now for $5 and a class set of 25 for $10 for each class set, uh, plus a little bit of shipping that would get sent to you. Uh, and I think sometimes we need to live in a colorful world, not a worksheet black and white one. So I hope that you helped, uh, you, you felt like this was helpful. Please share or tag one of your math teacher friends or, any teacher who's wanting more information about how to attack the different kinds of open-ended uh, constructed type response, this one being a number and a grid. Thank you. God bless.